Honestly, this was easily, easily one of the worst second half performances I've seen in God knows how long. Honestly, I just felt like Nottingham Forest, naturally, they're playing at home in front of their fans. They've got nothing to lose. They're trying to survive in the Premier League. Games like this are important and they rose to the occasion today. In the second half, they were putting more and more fear into us. They were pushing higher, pressing higher. We were struggling to play out as well too. And what I just did not like to see, if I'm being absolutely real, was how weak we looked. Losing battle after duel, after after tackle, after aerial. It, it was just like throughout the, the entirety of this game today, I'm just thinking, there's no way if you've got ambitions here to one day win this Premier League, you can't be this physically weak. If you don't have the strength, at least you need to have the speed, at least. And I feel like I'm going to talk about a few things later on in this review. I don't want to spend too much time. I want to keep things quite, you know, to the point and quite short today. But I just felt like that second half, you know, I don't think we even tested their goalkeeper at all throughout. And every sub that was made, it brought some stability, but it brought nothing else into the game. And I just think to myself, Graham Potter, it's just like you take two steps forward and you, and you go one step back. And I just think this constant, uh, you know, tactical switches and changes, you know, week in, week out. I feel like, you know, if you've got time here to be able to build at this football club, if the owners really believe in you, I mean, they're quite public in their support of you as well too. Like, in a sense, if this season doesn't mean anything, at least really, really use a season to really make the changes you want to see, irrespective of if that means certain players don't play because I feel like I keep seeing guys like Hutchinson, Chukwumeka and all these guys holding the bench. I'm thinking to myself, but I thought they're the future. I, th I thought that's why we spent so much money on these guys to sign them. You know, if, if they're in our plans, why not integrate them now to get used to whatever your plans are so we can really start to build something now instead of doing this thing of trying to make everyone happy and then making no one happy in the end. Because I feel like these performances... You know, I understand at the same time that we're still building, it's a process and it is going to take time. But when you see games like this where a lot of these moments could have been avoided with better preparation in terms of like, you know, people playing in a system and getting used to it more, uh, you're using the right players on the field that you actually want to use in the long term. When those types of things aren't being done, it's not a surprise why these results become a thing then. And it is quite frustrating as a fan. I'm going to keep it real. If we're building towards something for the future, these, this is the crucial time right now, yeah, to build those foundations, to get them ready for the future. And at this point in time, I feel like, I'm like, okay, I think we're going this way. I'm understanding things. And then next week, it's a completely different way of playing. And I'm not really understanding or getting what, what the plan is. And I feel like this is the thing that I want to see Graham Potter, you know, find some consistency with. So at least we can build and grow and do things. You know, this game today, I felt like other than like maybe 50 minutes throughout 90 minutes, we looked all right. We looked so okay. Even the goal we scored was stupidly fortunate. It was a nice bit of plays, you know, like in the first half, where some of like the few best moments from us came. Yeah, we created some things down the flanks, hitting Kukrev really high. Like uh, Pulisic was driving at people from cutting inside from the left-hand side too. And no surprise, you know, he plays across into the box. Kai Havertz, who I thought maybe for like 20 minutes in the first half too, was also looking quite good, just finding different positions, drifting to the left, right, dropping deeper, etc, etc. And I guess, you know, he got a lot of fortune with that back heel, which clips the crossbar, and of course lands perfectly to Raheem Sterling, who, you know, for me, that was, he wasn't there by mistake or by accident. Uh, in the first game versus Bournemouth, he was constantly finding positions free out wide on the right. And people weren't finding him. So it was good that his, you know, uh, consistency has led to him scoring a goal today. And honestly, when that goal went in, I was thinking, okay, we're going to step up a bit more. Uh, Nottingham Forest will open up. We can really get them, get them on the counter-attack and hopefully get the second goal. And, you know, one or two moments to get there. Half chances at best to keep things real. But then, other than that, everything was absent and things didn't exist and there was nothing in our game to give me any confidence that we, we could eventually get back in there to do something. So I'm even looking at this game with a completely different perspective now of actually, you know, being appreciative that we picked up a point at least because this performance today, they don't deserve anything. It didn't deserve anything at all. So to even leave here with one point, it's not saying much. Let's keep things real. It's, it's not giving a good account of what we're trying to do here. But um, I don't know. I, I think the, the one thing that was bothering me though in this game, which I want to touch upon now, 
It was the weakness. We just look so weak. It, uh, you know, I'll, I'll talk about some negativity. I have some towards certain players, their performances. But for now, I feel like this is like a, a team criticism. I'm looking at that team. I'm looking at Christian Pulisic. Maybe he's, he, I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm getting too ahead of myself. Has he lost like a little bit of explosiveness to create that separation to get past his opponent? Because he feels very easy to defend against. You know, you put a little bit of pressure on him with your arm and he falls down every time. So how can you rely upon him to spearhead your attack? I'm looking at Jorginho where today he was second best in every duel I was seeing. You know, I'm looking at Aspilicueta. Couldn't keep up with the pace whatsoever. Brennan Johnson was a nightmare throughout this game for us down the flanks. And you know, a better team that has players that have the same pace but end product on top, they punish, they punish us differently in this performance. And you're looking at Thiago Silva, you're looking at so many of these players in the team today and you're just thinking, wow, we look weak, we don't look strong. It gives me maybe like a different perspective to understand why Tuchel did certain things because maybe he's thinking, listen, this team needs three at the back to maintain some type of strength to have more physicality in the team. You know, physicality has been one of those critiques that you've not only heard from Tuchel, but also from Sari at the time, uh, even Antonio Conte. You need to have that in the Premier League. You need to, if anything, you know, when the games aren't in your favour, at least having the power and energy to win your duels. I and mean, when half your team can't really, you know, be there for the fight, I feel like it's no surprise why eventually we lost out in that midfield battle. I feel it's no surprise that eventually the attacking players couldn't get in the game because they were getting no service, because there was no one to play to. We were forced all the way back in that second half. We couldn't come out. And in the end, you know, Porter did the right things by bringing on Gallagher and Cover, who is so important in games like this to give you something to play out from. You know, and Cover receiving in our half, that's what he does best. And he helped us, of course, maintain some stability in this game today. But um, other than that, it was not much, you guys. You know, the Ziyech put in an excellent cross. That was the only moment to capture something, to, to steal, to steal something from this game. Because it would have been something we stole uh, if we got anything from that. But in the end, that lack of power then, you know, Havertz and, oh no, was it, uh, it was Pulisic and someone else on the left-hand side didn't take advantage. And that was the moment gone to get something from this game. But, you know, it, it, it's that message of physicality that we lack throughout that really cost us and now it's got me thinking, you know, when, we, when we're signing new players, we need to make sure they have the physical presence. We need to make sure that they have the power to actually play week in, week out. Because we'll get overrun in midfield. And, you know, thank God we're making moves now to sign Enzo Fernandez. It's quite obvious that he'll easily replace Jorginho in the team by giving us some more physicality, some more, you know, uh, ability to play forward a lot better. Jorginho was very poor at helping us progress anything or play through anything in this game today. That's why we're signing Badia Shield can also bring physicality and pace at the back too. So we do have players that can bring that when Kante's and Reese James's and Fafana's and many others come back in the team. We're looking at, uh, you know, like a bit of a, you know, B team and A team type of mix up right now due to the constant injuries coming throughout the team. So I guess that's my only excuse to try and understand, you know, to at least feel like this isn't like a consistent thing I should worry about once we have players and new signings coming into this team to help upgrade things. But if anything, it's like a sign of, you know, just how far we've plateaued in my opinion, because some of these issues that we've seen in, in terms of like needing competition at the right hand side, in terms of a uh, midfield, you know, we haven't signed a new midfielder, I think, since Mateo Kovacic, which has been, which has been years back. These have been needed to be addressed in this team way before this season that hasn't happened and I think we're finally paying the price for not planning ahead and getting ready for the future so if anything it's good to know that this new board believe in the future to have teams ready for the next few years not just for one or two seasons and I think signings like Badia Shul and Enzo Fernandez will give give a bit more prominence back into the team that is desperately needed but uh it's a move on now to uh, a positive note and I think the only positive throughout this game today the only single positive was Thiago Silva. I think this guy probably was the man of the match. I think that in terms of, uh, you know, he, he was everything for us in the back today. He used his experience on plenty of occasions to deal with certain threats on the counter-attack. He was helping us progress up the field as well too. Constant switch balls to change the directions of the, the attack and to, you know, find more width in the team to, to spread the team out a bit more. And just like exquisite 
you know, reverse, uh, you know, through balls as well too. Like one in particular to find Kai Havertz in the first half actually. And just like, you know, this guy is definitely world-class and he was the only guy that can leave this field today with his head held high because he played very well today. And if without him, I mean, we'd be, I don't think we get anything from this game. I'm looking at Koulibaly, I, I guess naturally time to talk about negatives now. And I just think this guy has really disappointed me in the sense that I expected we were signing someone who was in his prime peak years now that we could rely upon to get instant quality in the team. Like if you're 31 years old or if you're older, I'm going to be maybe a bit more critical because you play this game for a very long time. And it feels like he's a constant liability. He just can't defend effectively in the wide areas. I feel like, you know, a lot of times, this is why he's constantly giving away fouls and getting yellow cards in games today because once he's out wide, he doesn't have the dexterity to keep up with his opponents and he just, most of the times has to foul them so they can't get past him. Uh, it looks like a very poor signing right now. He's one of the weakest defenders I've seen us sign for, for a while and, I, and I've seen a lot of guys like, you know, first generation David Luiz and even Rudy at the start K when he first started. I mean, there's so many players who, you know, they improved, but in terms of performance, you know, not being as great at times. And I feel like he's worse than a lot of them. I'm not too sure it's a bit disappointing, but again, one of those performances where if I'm in Chabot Chalaba, I'm going to be a bit disappointed that I've lost my players in the team because Kulabali hasn't really stepped up in these past two games and he was really a hindrance at the back and... I think that was the story of our game, you know, too many hindrances at the back. You know, Aspilicueta can't really bring that that pace to escape out. Jorginho was getting stifled for the midfields. You're looking at Kula Bali, who even at times, you know, as the game was going on and he was losing his confidence, he wasn't playing forward as much. He was looking to pass the ball to Thiago Silva instead. We had to single-handedly do everything at the back in this game today. And, you know, when you're relying on performances like this, it's not a surprise that the team will break down and collapse. And this is why Nottingham Forest took advantage of that today. And we were lucky to get anything. So this is really poor. Let's hope that we can move on from this. Man City next, my lords. <sighs> Again, I don't have much expectation, but at least give me a performance to be proud of. But we'll talk about that when it comes. Right now, you guys, I'm going to keep things moving. Hope you guys have an amazing new year. Hope you had like fun last night as well. Let's hope this season improves and moves on. And let's hope we can kick things off by securing Enzo Fernandez next week. So I'm EFC. This is Blue Lions TV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos. Cool.